I thought I'd show you the aquaponic system. Here is the fish tank. As you can see, it's been leveled off. Water pumping in from the sump. And that pipe is the drain pipe. Over here is a ball valve to regulate the flow coming from the sump. And down here is another ball valve for pumping into one of the grow beds. As you can see, this one is getting very close to full. Maybe I can get a picture of, or a video of the bell actually working. And we keep going this way. This is the manifold coming out of our sump pump. This manifold actually has two spots for future expansion. And over here is yet another grow bed. Right now it's kind of turned off with another bell in there. And let's walk over this way. Yeah, this is a part of the IBC. That's gonna become a grow bed. Not really a grow bed, a raised bed, I should say. Here is the other grow bed. Unfortunately, the bell on this one's not working properly, so gonna have to uh, tweak that a bit. Here's the outputs. Now, this is getting very close. Let's see, I will uh, record once the siphon begins. Let's get another update. Tank, nice good aeration. Fucked around with those pipes a bit. Now they're uh, both longer, one was shorter for a bit, but it kept draining too fast. And cans for something or another. Rocks for the grow bed number one. All the tops are dry. There's a little bit sprinkling out, should cover that up. The sump is now off of that cinder block, a little lower, and that seems to have helped. You can see that there was a piece of PVC cut and then a coupling put in, doing real good. Everything's draining just fine. Looks like one just finished. This grow bed is staying dry on top the way that it should to help eliminate evaporation. Yep, nice and low. Did very well on its drain. Third grow bed, going nice. Dry on top, actually about to uh, cycle. Can't introduce fish yet, but you'll notice the water's clear. That's because, well, drained out all the dirty water, got rid of all the uh, sediment for the most part. Reason we can't put the fish in yet is, well, the state of North Carolina won't let me buy ammonia without anything in it. So, 10% ultra ammonia. The reason I'm doing it this way is so I can not kill fish. Right now the water is way too high in ammonia level to sustain any sort of aquatic life. But hey, here we go. Give it a couple more days. Bacteria will be in the grow beds. Be transplanting some plants and throwing in some channel cats. Okay, so what we've done is we've constructed a main above uh, above ground pond. The pond's dimensions are uh, 13 feet by 5 feet by 3 feet. Uh, we calculated it, and it's roughly around 1,500 gallons of water for the main pond. The fish, uh, the fish that will provide the nutrition or the nutrients for the system, will reside in here.
Okay, so what we got then down here at the bottom of the other end of this pipe is a sump pump. It's pushing water up into what I've constructed, uh, what we call a swirl filter. This is the main, I guess I'll call it the heart and soul of it, because, uh, other than providing nutrients. This actually, the purpose of this is to uh, remove particulate matter, and I'll explain how that, how that happens. So, water comes in. To the swirl filter you can see it down there it's coming in it's it got it at a 45 degree angle PVC it starts a, cent uh, a whirlpool effect a centrifugal uh, effect so that any particular matter that comes into the swirl filter will be pushed towards the outside of the swirl filter and then eventually drop to the bottom these two pipes here. This one here is the exit. This one is the overflow. one's a little bit lower than that one. Okay, so the water that's a, that's leaving the swirl filter through via that pipe comes out here. So, the nutrient rich water exits the swirl filter via this 2 inch PVC. You can see the media beds here. Off of the off of them I I'm teeing off 1 inch PVC at the bottom of the lava rock here. Okay. At the bottom of the lava rock here is a manifold that the nutrient-rich water extrudes from, filling up the media, a media bed that has the lava rock. You can see how wet the lava rock is, and that provides the nutrients, and the water, of course, is the delivery mechanism for the plants. It then, the water exits via a drain at this end, into another 2 inch PVC that goes all the way down here underneath and into what will be the feeder fish barrel. Okay, so this is what we call the feeder fish barrel. So once the nutrient-rich water filters through the media beds, providing the nutrition for the plants and things of that sort, it enters into the, the barrel here, okay, and this is nothing more than just a receptacle to hold the water. We're going to screen this off and then eventually stock feeder fish in here that will, will be able to transplant to the main pond to feed the main fish that are providing the nutrition to the plants. And so... It exits back into the pond for re recycling. And there you have it. Welcome to Aquabiotic Systems. Uh, I'm going to give you a quick little tour of my aquaponic system. Uh, we've had it going probably since about June of 2011. And it is now November 6th of 2011, about four months later. Let's go check it out. So here we've got our whole little electrical pump set up. Um, right now all it has is the back wall. Soon it'll have a roof over its head with a little cement platform uh, where I'll be storing some electrical stuff, outlets, etc. Switches to turn things on and off as well as the air pump and the water pump. Here we've got our switches to turn the pumps on and off as well as some outlets. It's running on 240 volt. Now I'd like to talk a little bit about how our air system works. Um, so I'm going to give you a rundown here of how we have our PVC pipe and tubing all set up. So here we've got our two air pumps. They each have a hose right here. There's two hoses. And as you can see right there as well as right here we've got our tubing that comes from the pump and goes into this 
into this device that we've created. It's kind of like a manifold, an air manifold. So we've got an end cap here that we actually screwed a hole in and screwed a little nipple on. And then we actually drilled some holes into the same thing all around where we've got these nipples. I'll show you here and you can actually see the water bubbling right there in the corners, right there in that corner. All right, so here we've got our little filter screen. I'll get to that in a second, but here again we have our nipples and we have our air stones. So this manifold here pretty much is just taking all the air and circling it around. So again, there's air coming in from this side, air coming in from that side. And between those two air pumps, I've got enough air to pump all my air stones. And there you have my manifold. So now let's go back to this filter here. So this filter screen is a filter screen with about, I think it's a three to four inch pipe, and that pipe is buried underneath the ground, and it pretty much goes to feed my wisteria. As you can see, I've got a nice little gazebo here with some plant cover to keep it cool. There's some banana trees in the back there, some bamboo, there's a rose bush. So this pipe goes underground from the filter and we've got perforated pipe wrapped in this fabric here this filter fabric underground and that serves as an overflow so we get a lot of rain here in Santa Cruz so we have to incorporate an overflow so that the tanks don't overflow with water and the fish come falling out the top so we've designed that overflow so that as the water fills up from all the heavy rain all the winter long, um, I can actually feed all my other plants uh, that are around this vicinity. So I can actually take the overflow water and bring it to where I need to uh, using PVC pipe. And in here we've got our fish. We've got about 170 rainbow trout more or less between this tank and this tank. And they're both buried underground that helps us keep the water a lot colder. I'm going to turn off these pumps here. And by turning off these pumps, I think we might be able to get a good glimpse of some fish. I've had the fish for four months and there's actually some pretty good sized fish in there. I see some swimming in there. There they are. I think it's feeding time.
Now that we got a good glimpse of them. There's actually some more in here. You can't actually see, we get quite the reflection there. You do see some close to the surface. That was a pretty big one right there, but let's see if we can get some light on here. Let's see if we can get a good glimpse of any of them. They are coming to the surface. Here's my filter screen where the water goes back to the pump and then from the pump up the hillside. We'll get a closer look at that in a second. And then we've got some stairs leading up to the solids collector to the left. So we come up the stairs and here we've got our solids collector. We've got the water coming in and we've got some baffles right here and right here. Those are two baffles and then there's another one here in the middle that goes two-thirds of the way up. These go two-thirds of the way down. It's pretty much slowing down the water. We've got some water hyacinths helping to filter out the water. These things, the water hyacinths are actually really good for your compost piles as well. As you see, Right there, there's the red knob. That red knob right there, along with this pipe. So we collect our solids. Our solids collect down at the bottom of this. And as they build up, every so often we pretty much turn this valve and the pipe goes down into a worm bin right there. Some uh, hookup for air stones, which we use as our degas chamber. And there you have it. There's a filter screen down there. There's a filter screen as well as the air stones which help to degas all the ammonia. And then we go to our first trough. We've got all kinds of different winter greens growing here. As you can see, that's one, two, three, and there's another three down below there and it's they're all stepped we've got one platform this platform here that stores these three and then another platform there that stores those three right now our system's totally up and running this bed right here has not been planted out yet as you can see I use bamboo rafts these come from local and sustainable bamboo resource here in Santa Cruz so I have untreated bamboo I'm working on different designs for these bamboos and as you can see there there's those three and each one of those are tiered and then we've got ourselves another little platform here that houses the next three some extra tanks thinking about maybe growing some algae that I might use as fuel for my veggie veggie powered diesel truck um, and also I can use some of that algae for fish food after I squeeze all the lipids and use that as fuel but we've got many different kinds of vegetables here winter vegetables we've got cabbages we've got broccolis we've got lettuces um, kales mustard greens bok choys all the kinds of different winter greens right now I'm actually trying to work on the pH our pH is at 7.5, our water is at 51.4 degrees, that's actually really good. Trout like the cold water. Uh, now there is a battle between the vegetables and the trout here because of that cold water, but again I'm going with the winter greens which do good in cold temperatures. Different kinds of greens here as you can see. We've got our plastic IBC tanks here, cut in half. These are the bottom halves, those are the top halves. I've also got some uh, mosquito fish 
uh, Western Gambusia is growing in these tanks. These mosquito fish help keep the mosquito population down. They eat the, all the algae, which uh, competes with the roots of the plants for uh, nutrition. And they also serve as a fish food for my rainbow trout. I also have different methods of capturing bugs. It's one of the main diet for trout. And there you have it. So please check back with us soon um, as we keep, we'll keep you updated uh, to, with the progress of this system. Thanks. So this is my aquaponic system. Uh, down below I have a fish tank and one uh, large fish uh, down here. He's a, kind of a sucker fish uh, that cleans the tank. Uh, I also have a couple of small tetras. Uh, three small tetras, two kind of ghost fish. I don't know if you can see them uh, in the tank. And then inside this uh, piece of wood, there's actually three loaches, uh, clown loaches, so the yellow ones with the white stripes. Uh, up above uh, is where my plants are growing. And right now I'm just growing mint. Uh, so that's the only thing I'm growing. I found that I did grow some lettuce uh, and I was actually growing a tomato plant uh, but because I only have one light source on top uh, when the when the tomato plant started growing too high uh, the ones down below wasn't weren't getting enough light so I found that I, I would only grow you know one type of plant at a time uh, so right now I'm doing mint uh, and you can see it's growing I've already cut a lot of them because uh, they've grown too big <laughs> So it's kind of nice and it's taken over the whole, the whole system. This actually started from one plant. Um, the starting plant is over here, down there. Uh, then it kind of expanded. Uh, and since then I've actually taken some snipping or clips uh, and I've actually replanted them as well. So there's one back here that I've replanted uh, and it's doing really well as well. Now the way this system works is it is an ebb and flow system. So from my uh, tank I have a pump down here so it sucks up the water. That water goes down uh, into a canister. So that comes down at the base there as a canister which then pumps the water back up um, into my uh, system where I'm growing my mint. Uh, and in here it's just a, it's just a bucket uh, with some rocks in it. Uh, so these are just the pebbles. Um, and what happens is it fills up with water. Once the water reaches a certain height, um, it starts flowing down this tube uh, in the tube back into the tank. Uh, and so it does fill up. Uh, you can see the water's rising right now. And it will reach a certain tire, or point. If I open this up in here. Uh, it's actually a bell siphon that I'm using. So what happens, I'll just pull this off. What happens is it reaches a certain height and then the water starts flowing down the tube. Once it starts flowing down the tube, uh, it creates a siphon and once it creates that siphon, it won't let up on that siphon until it reaches the bottom. So that's on here, there's some holes at the bottom and that will release some air into the siphon and once the air is released into the siphon, uh, the siphon stops. So right now you can see the water is actually up at the top of the rocks. And I'll just put the bell back on. And once that's backed on, it should actually start the siphon as well. So you can see here the water's starting to flow. In fact, now I've. Let me just see if it kick started it. Kick starts it. I have to give it. So here you can see the siphon has started uh, and it's going down. Now we'll do this automatically uh, and if I go in the back here you can see it's just pushing into the uh, back into the tank down below. Down below and the other thing that this is beneficial to to the the tank it does push out the bubbles as well so it kind of aerates the water 
I do have kind of a little bubbler uh, over on the side as well. And so the water's draining. Well, I'll record one whole cycle here. Now a couple of things that I, I noticed with the bell siphon at least uh, is I did start to put little holes at the top. So here I put a little air hole because um, I found sometimes it wasn't releasing this, the siphon. And the other thing down here is I found it was it was really good to put this elbow in because uh, that kind of kick starts the siphon as well. So if it's just a straight tube going down, uh, sometimes I found that the siphon didn't start up. So it did stop. So you can see here there's no water going through. Um, and so that means that the water is actually filling up in the bucket. I don't know if you can see that line of water that's slowly going up. And then once it reaches a certain height, I'll go down here to the tube. You can start, you can see a little bit of water starting to go at this point. And then it starts getting a little bit faster. And then eventually it will kick in. Uh, and it will just start sucking all the water out. So here it goes. and now it's going to take all the water. And so now if I looked at the water level, you'll start to see the water level drop slowly and then at some point it will stop. Uh, once it reaches a certain level, the air is going to get into that bell. Once that air gets into the bell, it will stop the siphon. And that's how my system works.